Hello. Ow. I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing. Look at the It's been recording since. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so. Bravo, Igor. Bravo, Pia. <laughs> Igor, is that the correct? Yes, it's correct. Yeah. Oh, you're is very good, yes. Sales, fat. Da razume. Da razume. Okay. Okay. Now that I said that, it's my bad attempt to speak some Serbian words. We it's still good, it's still we, good. We can continue. Yes. Okay. So, I'm here in the car driving with uh, Igor somewhere in Serbia. And after full stomach? <laughs> yeah. Too much food? Yeah, and after a long time talking on Skype, we we meet face to face. So I just thought, why I don't bring a recorder? So here it is. Yeah, why not? And she didn't tell Igor that she will bring a recorder. <laughs> so it's of course, new to me. You're so, it's me, to to me. <laughs> so it's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I may have to like beep out those swearings. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's going to be beep sound. Like the every, whole way, yeah. basically. It's just it's going to be the uh, okay. Okay. Like, so. yeah. <laughs> oh my god! You just did that. <laughs> just to be yeah. Uh, oh my god! Diana, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, okay. Uh, we literally are on the highway, and you guys just honking on the road, and there are cars around us. Anyway, so let's cut the shit. So. <laughs> you said the she has for yeah. That's right. Uh, okay, so for anyone who is doing effects and is doing fluid simulations, you will already know who Igor is. Uh, for those of you who don't, just go to Vimeo and look up Igor. Zanit. Zanik or whatever. Zanit, not pronounced Zanik yeah. or I don't know how else other people say it, but anyway. Um, yeah, uh, he does. He's worked with uh, RealFlow, Nyad, Bifrost, and Houdini. But before he got into effects, tell us, tell us what you were doing. Like, how did you get into computers? What, what, what was your first PC? Let's start with that. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing was, uh, it was like a funny thing because you know back then the Serbia was in, it was like closed country, like you know, because of the war back then. And the game stations was like, back then was too expensive, you know, to bring. So start of 90s, I went to my cousin in Germany and there was a first Nintendo console game. And I was like, you know, hooked. I was like playing all day, all day. And then when my mother came to pick me up, she saw that, like, I was so addicted to this. Like, it's, I'm really good at it. And, and the money that I got from, you know, my cousins, you know, you know, from everybody else, you know, just you know, like present money, you know. Uh, we decided to collect everything and let's go to buy the console and be, be in Serbia because back then there was, you know, no solution to buy anything like that in Serbia. I mean, for the reasonable amount. No, it's probably like a solution. Just yeah, but like just, to not, buy it. just not the proper one. <laughs> yeah. So this is how it started. I started, you know, like most of the people playing game like crazy what, what, what games did you have back then was super mario one yeah. two three and zelda okay and some yeah and tetris and some football thing but simple one back then oh. and then they saw that it, this gaming thing is you know the computer let's say by then it was also computer was really good for me and then they decided to buy, you know, one machine, you know, simple one, not even to buy. It was like one friend who had like two, eight, six PC back then it was, you know, Pentium. Yeah, one. Pentium, yeah. Pentium. Pentium 2? No, it was no. like before. Okay. 286, then yeah. it was 386, then 486. Yeah, my sister had a 286. Yes, then it was like 586, that was like first Pentium. What was, what was the brand? The oh, I, yeah, I really don't remember. I think that back then was still that custom build mm. because we always did the custom builds, and that's how everything started, you know. And then, and then I mean, and I was like a big fan of the movies, like you know King Kong back back then, then you know stuff that Island did, uh, 
I was the uh, and this Abyss? yeah that was like yeah, yeah. because my father also liked that movie was like, I was like hook especially that I like water a lot I was hook about that creature yeah. Damn. and then it, 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 it was Terminator you know the two I mean the two was like yeah. the big one the big one with, liquid metal yeah and it was still the the liquid thing I mean the one the Abyss was the water this one was the liquid and I decided you know back then the internet was a modem and that was like a stone age waiting to connect oh everyone has yeah and then when you connect you please that it's not good nobody picks up this phone yeah or drop the line or something yeah and then i start to research you know making apps you know how did they did it they start to interest in me then i discover i need you know stronger pc uh, wait so what were you running on the 286 no no it, it, it was just PC for games, you know. Okay. I didn't. I mean, that was the first PC, and soon as I start, you know, it was after that it was 386, then okay, first yeah, Pentium, yeah. Okay. and then I found the 3D Studio for DOS. Yeah. But it was kind of slow for my machine, and then I just, you know, okay, you're not going to use it. And uh, then I got from one friend. I got uh, that's already ready, you know, past in few years. I didn't do, you know, anything because, you know, machine was slow, it's a lot of money. Then I got the first uh, videotape of Gnome tutorials. Uh, Gnome. Yeah, uh, and, Alex Alvarez. Yeah, it was the Maya particles back then or noobs modeling. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I had a boat, but can't remember which one was the first. And the Maya particles were, were really amazing. And, you know, then I, you know, before that, I already collect, you know, some money, you know, from, you know, Christmas and stuff like that. And then I bought like Pentium 2. Yeah. And I installed like first, first I installed because I didn't, I couldn't find Maya. I installed the Alias Studio. Oh, but yeah. I did then I discovered it's not the same one. <laughs> no, no, yeah. it's quite different. Yeah. And then I found out about Maya. This is like a Windows Windows 95, I see. Yeah, that was like, yeah, Windows 95. Dun, 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 dun. And also, in I mean, in between that period of me discovering that I like CG, I was like more hooked to, also to IT, like doing the hardware stuff, fixing computers, you know, computer. building computers. So that was like one. I mean, that was something that you could do, no matter what kind of machines you have. You know, installing Windows. You know, fixing the softwares. I mean, the, if they crash, remove the wires or you know something yeah. stuff like just, that. Just do a full reformat. Yeah, yeah. Delete everything. <laughs> and then it's just start evolving. You know, then. You know, just learning and you know trying, and then I discover real flow. Playing with the real flow, it was sim. What version was that? Uh, version two point five, I think that I was the first one. And then the Maya was like what two, three, two three? three or something like that. Maybe even four. I don't remember, but something like that. And then it's. Yeah, I because all the machines were slow, and then I start to you know uh, meet the people who did this kind of work with After Effects before you know Premiere for editing, and they told me like, dude, you learned the After Effects because back then in Serbia the motion graphics was still more easier to get into than CG because you know CG was quite a bit expensive. Yeah. But I didn't like the after race, and then I found out about digital domain Nuke, and back then was version four, and it was not meant to be used. You know, I mean, the first Windows version, and nobody wants to use it. But I was hooked with the Nuke. It kind of looked really interesting to me. This node-based stuff. Yeah. Then I install, you know, try some open some plugins that it, it was hidden you know stuff like that then my friend told, told me that uh, rotoscoping was the easiest way to get into industry i mean into 
Serbian, let's say, in industry. Yeah. And then I start, you know, to do to learn roto and also on side I still wanted to do some fluid stuff, but it you know, it's not that slow. Kind of, kind of hard, yeah. Yeah, and slow and, uh, and heavy, you know, it's yeah. not that that's something that back then was not meant to be done at I mean at home, at home especially with old machines. Yeah. You could do with back then with silicon graphics but that was like <laughs> yeah it's like, like it's like buy three houses back then in yeah. Serbia and then after the school I you know I decided I want to work and then I went to IT company I spent there for four years but the good thing with the IT company I have the unlimited power with hardware so limited yeah I mean I can build machine that I want were there like angels singing when you open the door <laughs> no oh. no no, not yet. <laughs> but it, it was a good thing I could when there there is no work. I mean, there is no you know clients or something. There are some machines that are you know I can install you know some yeah, software yeah. you know and just run overnight. Yeah, it's like, like in the sky. sky. It's like we're in the uh, in the middle zone. It's yeah. like Jodie Foster movie. Yeah. How how fitting that we're talking about CG and we're like, well, I mean we're driving away from the thunder. So. What the hell is that movie? Shit. Compton? No. No. Uh, it's not actually. I always mix up Jodie Foster with the other one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jodie Foster Hurricane. with Contact. Yeah, yeah. There's Contact. That was also a great movie, but it was a Matthew McConaughey who was a twister. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Also yeah, yeah. CG. Yeah, yeah. First Island crazy twister. Yeah. So back to back the, to the... Uh, the roto and the fume. Yeah and. And I also work as an IT guy because you know I they they knew that I know you know hardware stuff. Yeah. And then there was one shot that they tried to outsource to some French company, I think. Uh, but they there the French company was quite slow, and me and my colleague back then we were hundred percent sure that we can do that shot. And it was the tears, the actress is crying and the tears start falling and tears like, you know, dropping on the ground and more and more trees become the small river, like, you know, yeah, yeah. really small river yeah. becoming the big river and then it's blending into the big lake. So it's like the story is like she cried that much that she filled the entire lake. Yeah. And the producer, they was like, no, you cannot do it. And then we decide, okay. Back we will here, work we over one weekend <laughs> and, we, and we did show one shot yeah. because that was really a long shot but we did some cheat just to show them that it's possible to do it yeah. and then okay they gave us the shot and we just walked you know completely one month without sleeping like in <laughs> usual stuff that you guys will do if you go to working in the CG industry and this is how everything began I mean after this movie I'm start working with the creator studio the crew that was already working on that movie, they just, you know, after the movie was finished, opened the creator. I did a few stuff for creator and also I was the IT guys, you know, for the network farm service. Creator also. is not the first uh, CG studio. No, no, before creator, there, there was a few studios in Belgrade back, back in 89, back then, also working on the silicon graphics machine. It's really, the CG industry is really let's say old I mean the people who did the first stuff but they just you know left the country someone stay but you know it's it's a normal story for this type of work you know. and after creator the after creator that was the funny story uh, I went uh, on a river for two weeks and uh, uh, I also Easter Houdini before that you know it's like were you Long. still on the uh, Windows OS or like yeah you it was the this? yeah it was the still Windows. You're a Linux guy now. Yeah, but back then it was Windows because Linux was kind of a bit tricky to install with, with all your know, sound and everything. Oh yeah, the drivers. Yeah, so it was more Windows, and then because I was also Reflow guys, my friend called me. There is a job from Germany. They need Houdini Reflow guy. Okay. I told him like, well, let's do the test because you know I never did any outsource. Yeah. Let's do the test, and if they like, yeah, why not? I can go there. They sent me the test 
to do it. I did in like one or two days, send them back just the same file so they can see the approach that I'm using the actually lead also who is supervisor for entire project, but he was the lead for FX guys. And uh, that's how everything be begin me as an outsource guys. Guy, I went to Germany to work. Then I went back home and I leave the crater. Then I start working as, you know, my own. And then I go back again to Germany. Then after that was Canada. Then few other... But you can't remember the name. Yeah, the, I cannot remember the name. Some but it was, Toronto. yeah, it was in center close to side effects. That's what I know. <laughs> but side effects was on uh, Richmond Street before. Yeah, I, this was like a few big buildings away, something like that. I mean, back for me, that these buildings was like half of my town, because that's the first time that I saw that huge, huge buildings in you know, big, big cities. Yeah. And uh, after that, it's more or less was you know freelance work. Sometimes I go to studios, sometimes don't. And. Uh, after I came from, uh, I think from se third time from Germany, that was summer, that, 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 that there was a first presentation on FX Guide about Nayad and that Veta is using him for Avatar. And there was no demo or anything, just. Veta was using for what? For Avatar movie. Oh, for, uh, no. they explained for one shot when. Uh, Na what was the actress name? Na 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 no. something. Yeah. Whatever. When she's drinking, <laughs> when she's drinking the water from the leaf. Yeah, yeah. So that shot and the, uh, yeah, and the store uh, uh, wave breaking on the cliff, and there was you know demo with big amount of particles, yeah. and there was no, there was just exotic matter web page, you know, and email, you know. And I tried to contact, I sent email a few times, no answer. And then I got the answer. Like, it's not ready for, you know, freelance guys. Okay. It's more for studios, blah, blah, blah. And after one month, I sent another email and they told me, okay, maybe we can give you the test. But there is no tutorials. There is just, you know, a few simple, <laughs> You're on your own. you know, a few simple scenes and really limited documents. But because I already knew Houdini, a lot of stuff like fields, you know, particles, I mean, points and transferring the attribute from the fields to points in, you know, back. Uh, it was already really good understanding and, and, and a background for the Nyad solver. And when, when I tried, it was like really easy to understand. And I developed shark splash and ship on the water in like three days. And the Nayad guy didn't believe that I did, so I sent them the scene that, so that they can see. And this is how my journey with water, like on the bigger scale, nice. begin, you know. And then it was more like I was hooked with the testing, because now I finally have a big power in my hand. Also, near, you know, the PC harvest was, you know, cheaper and cheaper and, you know, it was... You, you 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 can buy fast machine for reasonable amount of money not like you know it was like 15 years ago or 20 and uh, that's that's how you know everything started and then i produced test by test and you know put you know lay blast or renders on, on vimeo i use houdini for rendering because houdini back then was so software that you can easily render fields, surface and points in same render without any problem. Every other was kind of bit tricky, or you need some development of the code, you know, in the background. But Houdini was quite easier with their BGO native format, and that's how everything, you know, started. Then I did the first big water project, the biggest that I did, you know, I mean, in in terms of details and scale was like shark night like every droplet that you, you can see it was like 120 fps shot so you can see every particle move yeah in, there is no motion blur or anything it's just you see it how it's yeah. moved and after that you know people st start to call me for the naiad 
to show them, to make the setup. Then I made like sharing other people's scenes on my web page so that other u u users can check it out. Check it out, yeah. Then I was collecting the fluid dy dynamic makings of just like making the breakdowns. Yeah, just, no, just more or less like making place one web, web page with water oh, like stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a repository. Yeah, like something like that. So you have like about the software, about how bigger guys did it. Then after that, it's just, you know, rest is, uh, let's say, history. It's just more and more R&D, more and more stuff, faster machines, you know, better tests, and that's it. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess it, maybe it sounds weird because I'm working for side effects and I'm, like, having you talk about Nyad or Bifrost or RealFlow, but... Um, as a overall fluids guy, like it's totally normal to be interested in other software packages that that can do the same. Kind yes, of thing, I mean so. back then, I mean back then, fluids in Houdini was just too slow. Nyad was the first flip base. I mean, for the uh, general public, I'm not talking about in-house tools. Yeah, yeah. So Nyad was the first one for the general public that developed flip base solver that was crazy fast back then in Houdini it was volume based fluids that give you nice result in terms of let's say stuff on the like ships and you know maybe some floods but this was quite slow so and also the real flow you know SPH solver was also I mean the similar SPH was in Houdini but also slow so the flip was something like refresh Uh, you were describing your machine. Yeah, so uh, i7 with uh, eight core. I mean, four core and eight threads. 20, uh, 32 gigs of memory. And last year I bought Xeon, 40 core, 80 threads, and 120 gigs of memory, so I can run higher tests. So that's. But everything that you see on Vimo, maybe the last 10 tests, everything before that was done on old i7 with 24 gigs of memory. Damn. So. Yeah, so that's that's no my power at no home. No excuses for yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, it's just how to learn how to optimize stuff. Which uh, you don't want to provide people any information because there Igor is doesn't, people already Igor know. Do, Igor doesn't want to give any presentations. People or... already know. There's sometimes uh, just people people want to be a bit lazy, so they don't want, for example, to cache all the stuff before even even go to simulation. The good thing with Houdini is that you can cache everything. So everything that you can cache cache to hard drive then run the high res simulation and it's going to be really good optimization that's like first one and then just iteration iteration and then you learn how the parameters works i have a lot of wedges on my web page so they can see how some parameters work and that's it you know just 10 years of doing r d for yourself and that's it just like that just like that every day i mean there, there, there is no excuse you don't have time. If you go out with a friend for a drink, just run the simulation. If you go to bed to sleep, just run the simulation. If the machine... So basically what Igor's saying is you will have like really large electricity bills. Yeah, but if you want fluid simulation, you need to pay <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, I think we're going to like slowly wrap this interview because... Uh, we're sitting in a car still. It's getting hot. So, do, are there any people that like uh, you looked up to before when you started out, and then now nowadays? Any names that come to mind in the beginning? No, I mean more or less was you know people that back then was. I mean there is a lot of them that give uh, influence, but it's more or less that people back then give you interview. You know how they did works. You know like lead artists or FX artists or supervisors, just people who share their knowledge in making of maybe not the maybe that knowledge was, you know, you know, just one percent of what they actually did. But when you read a lot what they did, you start to getting ideas your own. So you can try you, 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 you can try their approach or fewer approaches and then maybe you discover your own approach. Okay, let's try. Maybe my approach is going to work for me. Maybe it's not good for them. I mean, there, there is no approach that will work every time. Yeah, yeah. So you just need to play. But when you play all the times and you try every solution, 
Later, it's going to be easier for you because let's say that you have 10 ideas to try. But if you already tried these 10 ideas 20 times and you know that five of them will never work, why to waste the time on doing them again? Just use these five. And maybe you already know after doing a lot of this that these of these five, two will work better for this test than the other ones. So you just use, then you just minimize your, I mean, I can set up the high res sim now in one take and just run it overnight and I knew this is going to look okay. <laughs> because yeah. also Fiona saw about, well, I mean, from my few tests that I can get a good re result really fast, but that's not came over, you know, yeah, overnight. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, just try, don't be, just try post on, on online, you know, people are going to complain. And also the problem with R&D tests. You mean comment. You yeah, <laughs> and the problem is, the problem with R&D tests is that people, I mean, if you're a FX artist and your main focus is water, for example, when you do the R&D and you do the render and everything comp, few of people will just comment on the water stuff. Mm. Everybody is going to comment. The lighting is not good. The compositing is not good. Stuff that are not important for you, but they are going to comment on that. Then you are going to be even better in these areas because if you want your test to look good, you need to make good re render, yeah. good comp. And then you will learn how to comp. That's like in a bigger studios, but for you, okay. And then this is really good because when you work with the clients, you know what kind of stuff work in uh, comp. Like what kind of attribute you get from fluid simulation that you can use in comp. To make your test look 10 times better. Oh yeah, speaking of uh, comp, you're using comps in... in yeah, the yeah, yeah. I made my automatic system that already pre-built, so it's much easier to view, like, you know, you have, like, few passes that you use, just lab comp to see how they work. And just, you you can do play blast, render, and pre-comp in, in the same node tree, just pr press it, you know, render, and overnight you will have same play blast, render, and comp in same Houdini scene, so it's much easier than waiting, so... Yeah, that's it, more or less. Just play it. Make it as a fun, don't make it as a pressure that you need to work it, you know. If you make it to be as your pressure, then you will not make a anything. But, you know, just don't make excuse, I don't have a time, you have a plenty of time. If you are not home 24 hours, your machine can do 24 hours, something. Even stupid sphere drop in the tank with 55 different ver version of parameters. When you come, when you see all of them, you will know which one you like. And you save yourself a lot of time. Yeah, that's it, you know. Just, you need to try. It's not that hard. It's just easy. You just need to, you, you just need a lot of trial and error and experience and you will become better and better. Don't just go online like everybody. I need water shader or I need white water shader, but it's not just white water shader. I mean, my re re render sometimes look okay or even bad, but in comp they make it look the best. So it's not just, sometimes it's simulation plus shader, plus render, plus comp, plus. Yeah. So it's not just that part. Yeah, so that's it. And make it, you know, make it your hobby, make it as a fun and it's going to be more easier for you than pressure or I just need to do something okay uh, <laughs> well yeah. Igor is like uh, sweating we're in like a sauna here because yeah. we're in a parking lot and, we and don't it's wanna, boiling we don't want to capture the all the ambient sound yeah. so we're just gonna wrap this interview up if there's any if there's no last words I gonna say no but for me it was okay we did most say yeah next voila. time Next uh, time, next time we, the I interview is going to be after one bottle of really good drink. Uh, then it's going to be the more. What's the name? Pelinko. Pelinko. Yeah, Pelinko. Yeah, yeah. Gorky list. Gorky list. That's that Over shit is and really out. good. Over yes. and out. Okay, thank you. Thank ciao. you. Ciao.